Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss in internet chitlords, and today I've uh, got for you guys some very breaking news that uh, I think is has just started spreading throughout the, the internet, so maybe you'll be hearing it uh, by the time this video comes out. You might have heard it somewhere else, but uh, I'm, I've decided to do this recording as, as early as possible here, <laughs> and... Uh, the news is, it's come out on uh, on a couple of English language websites now. That uh, well, this is uh, I I've seen it reposted on Reddit and N World as saying that uh, Wizards of the Coast is selling or attempting to sell Dungeons and Dragons, and allegedly the purchaser of this is the Chinese multinational corporation Tencent. However, I, I think that there might be some misinterpretations, if you will, problems in translation. Because the, the original article about this came out on a Chinese website, a Chinese language website. And uh, I, I think it then probably got translated to an English language tech or marketing website or something like that. Uh, you know, business website. And I think that the, the um, maybe the translation wasn't as clear or the, the accuracy of it. Um, so here's the thing, right? The, the, the news that, that has been spread around would seem to suggest that um, Wizards of the Coast wants to sell off D&D because they've lost enormous amounts of money on it, <laughs> or they're they're they haven't really, but they're they're not they're, they're they haven't come anywhere close to the amount of money that they they wanted to make. You'll remember that Cynthia Williams said that she was going to transform D and D into a one billion dollar business, and it's it, that 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 absolutely hasn't happened, and there is no sign that it's going to happen. Okay, um, so. Presumably, the, the people who have been interpreting this in the, the early moments here in social media have come to believe that they're, they're going to sell D&D off to Tencent. And if you're wondering why to Tencent, uh, it's a, apparently because there was a, there's a connection between Tencent and Larian, who did Baldur's Gate 3. Tencent is apparently a big investor or, or a partial owner of Larian, something like that. I'm not, I don't have all the details about that myself. Um, and originally Larian was trying to do a deal with, with wizards and because they're not big enough, they, they called in Tencent and now there's negotiations going on. And so if you've heard that the, the news is that wizards is selling off D and D, um, to Tencent, this is, I, I've got to tell you that this doesn't come out as what I read. Okay. Um, so the, in, in the original context of it appears to actually be that uh, Wizards of the Coast is trying to make a deal where it sells intellectual property rights to Tencent with regards to to making video games, okay? So computer games like Baldur's Gate 3. Because in business, there's a lot of ways you can you can get a deal, right? And, and uh, so one of them is you're making a game like let's say Baldur's Gate 3, then you have to license those D&D rules and the D&D trademarks and what have you, you know, all the Forgotten Realms stuff, right? And all of that, uh, which means that Wizards is getting either a big payment up front or they're, they have to have profit sharing or, or things like that. And then Wizards people have to be involved in the project um, and, and might have certain clauses and conditions and all of that sort of thing, right? Um, and it seems that what, what Tencent actually wants, it's not that they want to, they're, it's not they're, they're buying Wizards of the Coast or that they're buying Dungeons and Dragons that are going to start making D&D books. Um, what they want is to to get a deal where they are will be the exclusive 
creators. They'll 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 have um, the rights to the D and D IP with regards to video games. Which, if you're a video gamer, I guess might be good news. I mean, Larian apparently did a very good job on Baldur's Gate three, to most people's opinions, and uh, it means that they're they're obviously planning. They have an interest in making more D and D based computer games, video games, whatever you want to call them. All right. So that is apparently what the deal is really about. Um, and, and so at least as far as I was able to understand it, um, this is not, this doesn't really mean, and I, I think it's highly unlikely that it means that uh, there won't that that that's, that Tencent will get all of D and D right. It's just I think it's exclusively for the part that has to do with with video games, right? In the same way that somebody else might buy the rights in order to make movies or something like that. Um, so presumably, Wizards of the Coast will continue doing other products related to D and D, which will include D and D merchandising and uh, you know licensing out for. TV shows and movies, if any studio wants to ever touch it again, which is, is up, up for debate, right? <laughs> Considering that that they didn't really do that great uh, with the D&D movie. Um, although they, they, it was, they didn't do terribly bad, right? Like it wasn't a, an, an abject catastrophic flop either, right? So maybe, who knows? Um, and they're, they're still going to probably, you know, the, the projects of the rather pathetic selection of products that they're going to be coming out with for the 50th anniversary will still be happening you know in all likelihood especially because one thing that the original article makes very clear is that these are these are very initial talks there's no guarantee that that even the video game deal is going to come out um it's they're they're at the at very early stages of negotiation and this article is essentially kind of a leak, right? I don't know. I mean, it, it may be a literal leak in that somebody who wasn't supposed to say anything said something, or it might be that somebody from one of either companies actually wanted this news to come out for whatever obscure reasons, right? Stock value or stuff like that, right? Um, and, but in either case, this is definitely not a done deal by any stretch of the words, right? And the, the one thing that it does bring into question... <laughs> It, it, it puts even a greater doubt about the ongoing process of the virtual tabletop because, uh, you know, that's, that makes things get even more dicey there. Uh, I'm not saying that the virtual tabletop is going to be scrapped, but I'm saying that this increases the chance that it might end up being scrapped. Right? I think that, again, in my opinion, as I stated in, in previous videos, a big part of making the virtual tabletop work would have depended on the attempted hijacking of the OGL that they tried to do early last year, uh, which they had to go completely back on. They realized that the, 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 the pushback on that was just so tremendously bad for them. And it, it was, it was catastrophic. They, they haven't recovered from that since, and, and they'll probably never recover from that, at least not for a very long time. Um, but it, it having an exclusive OGL that they controlled and that they could then demand that people would have to pay them and that, that people would have to pass um, their arbitrary standards to produce products um, basically would have allowed them to have a very strict control and to eliminate the possibility of a third party product replacing the pen and paper books, right? Because if the goal of the VTT is to ultimately move D and D from a, a tabletop game that you play with books into a subscription based game that you must play on the VTT, that would, that, that gets hijacked immediately. If when one D and D comes out, they're they're going to instead have a bunch of competitors making you know five e based copycats in the same vein of how you know Pathfinder um, was a three third edition copycat that made benefit out of 
the catastrophic fourth edition of D&D. So, you know, this the, the BTT is already kind of hobbled from the beginning in terms of a business plan, right? And I think that at the moment, it looks like they're still carrying on with it, right? But um, this, this news does increase the possibility that they might decide to backtrack or to scrap the whole thing altogether or to, to minimize the, the emphasis on it, you know? Um, and especially because d d video games will in essence be a kind of competitor to the virtual tabletop. So if they end up making a deal with Tencent and Tencent's going to put out a bunch of, you know, Forgotten Realms based video games like Baldur's Gate or other, you know, or other IP, because I, presumably they're going to, they're going to have the exclusive option for any of the d d uh, volume, you know, all of its settings, all the monsters, everything like that. You know, I'm, I'm assuming that's the deal that they're going for. That's just my assumption, but they could say something much more focused, right? It all depends. Um, but if they did that, you know, th- then uh, the virtual tabletop will lose that element of, you know, people who, who are more comfortable as gamers on videos, you know, on video games uh, or on computers, Um that that might have been drawn to the virtual tabletop if there wasn't that those those alternatives alternatives like Baldur's Gate three, so they you know Hasbro might be deciding that maybe having their own virtual tabletop is not that hot an idea. I mean they've tried many times before and it's never worked for them. So this would be par for the course if it doesn't work for them now, right? Um, and they might just you know scrap that. And the question then is what what would happen? You know. Um, because it's not like their book sales have been good either, you know? So, so it might be that they're going to put, they're not going to, not necessarily that they're going to put D and D out to pasture necess- exactly, but that, um, they might very much change their focus. I don't know, to like Twitch channels and YouTube stuff. And then, uh, to do, They'll they'll publish the three main books of one D and D, and then they'll they'll probably end up doing a much much more limited catalog of products that come out after that. A lot of which will be more about collectability or or uh, playing off of nostalgia, you know, reprints of stuff or reinventions of stuff. I guess because they're probably not going to reprint exactly the original material because they've already put themselves in, in the corner of, of declaring that original material problematic. Right. But, um, you know, it'll be special products, special box sets, stuff that'll cost a hundred bucks and up that will be for nerdy collectors to buy, you know? Um, so anyways, that's, that's the big news. And I wanted to, to get a, an advance, <laughs> a, a, an advance jump on it here. Uh, it, it certainly seems to me, that this is significant news, but it's still very early to tell where it's going to lead, you know, and, and um, I definitely don't think based on what I read, if what I, if what we read is accurate, because again, this could just all be complete rumor. It could be completely fake. Right. But if assuming that, that there's a basis for this, uh, I don't think that Tencent is going to start publishing D and D books or that they're going to, they're going to take the rights for that. It, it, what I read made it pretty clear that what they're going after is the video game rights and to have like an exclusive, they, they want to purchase those rights either long-term or in perpetuity or something like that. They want, they want to get that piece of the D and D IP. So we'll see, we'll see what happens, but uh, that's it for now. And if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, share this video anywhere that you think people will find it interesting. And uh, don't forget to check out my products. The links are in the description below. Check out, if you want, good RPG books for tabletop, which you can also use in online games if you're (laughs) running online games with your friends. Check out my games like, uh, you know, Lion and Dragon and uh, The Invisible College and uh, Star Adventure and Arrows of Indra. And my supplements, like the Old School Companion 2, which has been getting a lot of love on my channel lately, which I love because uh, it's, uh, you know, if you want a collection of 26 different adventures, most of which are kind of sandbox adventures based on um, real 
medieval legends, myths, or history, um, folklore, uh, you're, you're going to find it really a, an interesting collection of adventures, and, and a lot of them can be very easily kind of translated into non, you know, not, not necessarily in medieval England settings, you know, uh, and check out, you know, Sword and Caravan and its supplements like Wilderlands. If you don't have, if you have Sword and Caravan, you'll want to check out the Wilderlands book and Heroes and Villains of the Silk Road and Social Encounters. And, uh, of course, Dark Albion Cults of Chaos. If you want a great generator of random tables for you to use uh, to create an entire enemy group and plot for an adventure in, you know, under 10 minutes, that's, uh, that's the book to get. Um, and be sure to check out on the Red Room's website the Pundit Files. The latest one is uh, Quick NPC Generation, Pundit Files number four, which uh, lets you deal with those pesky situations where you've, you've uh, had a random NPC that was supposed to interact with your players for a minute, and then uh, all of a sudden the PCs want to adopt him or something, and you've got to develop a a more fully fleshed out personality and interests and, and abilities and everything for him. You can also use it to generate any NPC, you know, even one that you, you know, you're, you're planning ahead of time. So uh, be sure to check that out. And the other issues of Pundit Presents only available on the Red Room. And uh, they're all really good. And they only cost about three fifty. Okay. <laughs> so uh, be sure to check those out. Currently smoking nothing because it's too early. <laughs> Talk to you soon.